Welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Lab, boys. This is part two of chapter four, working with regex. Let's get started. So we left off last time talking about regular expression. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that subject. What are regular expressions and what are some example exercises so we know how to use them? Let's talk about regular expressions or regex. So regular expressions are a way to basically sort through text files and pull out specific characters. If you're going to be working with Linux, you're going to be working with a lot of text files. You should get very comfy with regex boys. Let's get started. So how do we use regular expressions on Linux? Well, thankfully, there is a tool for that. Like most things in Linux, we've actually been using it in our other video, and that tool is called grep. Grep stands for General Relative Expression Parser. So let's say we wanted to find the user root in our passwd file. To do that, we do grep root slash etc passwd. And let's remove that extra space there. And as you can see, it showed us all occurrences of the user root in slash passwd. This is a very powerful utility. I could spend several videos going into how to use it. So now that we know what regex are, we should probably know about regex special characters. Let's learn more about that. All right. So let's dive deep into regex and talk about what all these different characters do. The best way to remember this is to think about what you want to do and then try to memorize the character that matches to that. There are a lot there are a lot of regex special characters. The best way to memorize them is to hop on the mint Linux command line and use them. And as you use them and you try to achieve different things, the need for them will force them to stick in your mind. What if we want to find a string that starts at the beginning of a line? Well, we use the caret key for that. So for instance, we could do grep caret root slash etsy pass wd and that shows us where root begins and pass wd and that's different from root without the pass wd because then you see root appears on this line and on this line so the caret and the grep command forces grep to look at the beginning of a line for that specific string so we know how to find something at the beginning of a line what if we want to find something at the end of a line well we use the dollar sign so much in the same way that we use the credit. So we do grep root dollar sign at C pass WD and we got nothing. But if we were to do grep root no login, you see we got a bunch of different results because no login appears at the end of all of these. Now that we know what grep is, we should probably know how to escape special characters in grep. Let's talk about that. So if you're using bash, which is the shell below, and you're using regular expressions, you might run across an issue where both the bash shell and the regular expression command interpret the special characters the same. So for instance, the bash shell interprets this, the question mark character, as well as the dollar sign character. As interpreted text, for instance, the dollar sign can be used to create variables. So how do we differentiate interpretable text from our grep command well first i have to show you what i mean by interpretable text so for instance if we were to do so how do we differentiate interpretable text from our grep command to do that we use quotation marks so for instance if we were to do grep and then we try let's see here lsl slash etsy pass wd you can see we get the result lsl right so the quotation marks make it so that these special characters right here are not interpreted the same way as they would be if we did not put them there. So now that we know how to escape special characters, let's talk about those special characters a bit more. Or as they're otherwise known as wildcards. Let's dig into what the wildcards do and how they work. Hello and welcome back. Let's talk about regex and wildcards. So I talked about this a little bit earlier. Let's talk about wildcards some more. So one of the Linux wildcards you can use is the dot character. Rather, the dot character can be used to represent any character in a string of characters. So for instance, if we were to do grep, let's etsy, oh, grep, let's etsy, pass wd, you'll see it shows us all references that start with R and ends with T. 
So we got R forward slash FTP, R slash encryption, R slash root, and R slash root. Brackets can be used for much the same thing. So if we were to do grab, and with brackets, it looks for a range of characters. So if we were to do A O U slash at C fast W D, it would show us all lines with A O U as references. We can get more specific and do something like, and then it's going to show us all lines where either or it starts with R and ends with T, and then it matches one of these three characters in the middle. This is perhaps the wild card I use the most, and that is the star or the multiplier. So for instance, if we were to do grep r slash etsy pass wd, what it does is it references for any or more references to r. So it's going to look for everything that starts with r and goes afterwards. So for instance, r slash var slash bool is valid, r slash operator is valid, right? You can get more specific and you can do RO and now it's only going to match for characters that start with RO. Very useful. Don't worry guys. I know you're getting tired of my voice. We are almost there. Breathe with me. Now let's proceed. We are going to talk about regex, extended regex. In fact, I know we've already been talking about regex, so that's kind of a moot point. So if you're using grep, not all the characters you use will be available by default. So grep has what it considers standard expressions and extended expressions. How do you know the difference between a standard and extended expression? Well, you just have to get good and know them, right? This is something you kind of figure out after lots of usage. So let's talk about an extended expression. First things first, to use an extended expression, we have to use the dash E flag with the grep command. So let's walk through an example of using grep dash capital E grep dash capital E root. And then the question mark is going to look for all references to root before that slash at C pass WD. So as we can see, we have two references to root here. There is also another extended regex and that is the plus sign. So the plus sign matches for one or more of the preceding characters. So if we were to do grep dash e root plus slash etsy pass wd you'll see we end up with a couple options where root is not just the single root it's all references to root in that file we did the same thing with bin and you'll see all references of bin in that file i know just a few minutes ago i said we're almost there and don't worry we are but we have one more topic to cover grep flags there are some very useful grep flags i feel like you should know let's go ahead and talk about them hello i know you thought we were done with grep but we're not done quite yet so let's talk about grep flags there's a few flags you're going to need to know when you're using grep let's talk through the most important ones or at least the ones i use most often one thing to remember is that grep is case sensitive so if we were to do grep for all characters c and dot slash grep dot text You'll see the results highlight C, but the capital C in chicken is not highlighted right there. So we wanted grep to match for all characters, including capital letters. We would have to use the dash I flag. And now you'll see we have a couple more results. We have captain, chicken and cow, right? And those have capital C. Another useful grep flag is the dash V flag. What does it do? It stands for inverse match. So for instance, if we were to do grep dash V, it would match for all lines that do not contain C or rather all lines that do not contain lowercase C. So let's do V I, as you can see, these are all the lines in that file that do not contain the C character. And last but not least, let's tie and condense all that information we just and last but not least, let's condense all that information we just shoved into our brain holes into one practical lab exercise. This is lab 4-3 from the RHCXA EX200 guidebook. Tag along. This is Regex Lab 4-3. Let's get started. First things first, they want us to run a grep 
again slash Etsy services for the pound sign. And as a result of that, we get the output of everything in Etsy services that starts with pound. This is useful, but everything that starts with pound in a config file is technically a comment and is not relevant. So what if we wanted to find all the lines that do not start with pound? That's pretty simple. We go back to grep and we do grep dash V and now grep lists all the lines that do not begin with pound sign. So these are all the services that are currently enabled. If you've paid attention this long, I applaud you and I thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this riveting and educational content. I hope you left this having learned something. I definitely learned something along the way and I was able to test my knowledge as I made these videos. So I'm pretty happy with the results, but I might have gotten something wrong and people love proving you wrong on the internet. It's one of their favorite hobbies. It's like they have nothing better to do. So for those trolls out there who want to prove me wrong, please watch through my videos and point out every single thing I did wrong. If there's enough traction on that, I might even make a corrections video where I point out everything I got wrong. That depends entirely upon you and how many comments I get about it. Otherwise, I'll keep marching on and we'll start talking about chapter five, connecting to Linux systems, which is where the fun stuff starts actually happening. We're starting to get into unfamiliar territory, boys, murky waters.